When discussing van life, there seems to be a lot of bad advice out there. There's one thing in particular that people try to push on new people that are new to van life, and that's something that I just don't agree with at all. Well, good morning. I am making some breakfast tacos here. And I should say it's morning for me. I have no idea what time it is for you, but because it's morning for me, I'm making some breakfast. I have some diced potatoes here. Just gonna fry those up a little bit in some butter and olive oil. And then I'm gonna need, uh, I think we're just gonna go for one egg today. Let's make a light breakfast. Hopefully I'm not uh, making the wrong move here and just doing one egg, but I'm not feeling too hungry this morning, but I definitely need to eat, so that's why I'm going light on the breakfast. Things are just about cooked, so I'm going to turn the gas off. Actually, I'm going to turn my other gas valve off down there. Sometimes I forget. I have a secondary shutoff valve that sits just under uh, neath here and I like to turn that off because sometimes on this little kind of cheapy stove uh, the stove is great but uh, one of the little downsides with the stove is that this little shutoff valve doesn't totally shut the gas off so that's why I have the other shutoff valve I just need to remember to actually use it and sometimes I don't okay those look pretty good I should probably get a mitt here Yeah, this isn't a whole lot of food, but, you know, I think it's going to be okay. We could always eat lunch early, too, couldn't we? Add a little cheese in here. This is just a little uh, white cheddar cheese. And then to make these perfect, I'm going to add a little yellow bird. And I've been eating the jalapeno yellow bird lately. It seems to be my favorite lately. We go back and forth between serrano yellow bird and the jalapeno yellow bird, but... We'll do this right now. There we go. Nice little simple, quick, tasty breakfast. Little, very little. Maybe I am regretting that I didn't put two eggs in this. Yeah, two tacos was just the right amount. I've never been much of a breakfast eater, so it's it's been always a struggle to uh, eat breakfast for one thing, but um, trying to eat a big breakfast is just not gonna happen with me most, most of the time. Uh, lately though, I've realized I feel a whole lot better if I get some protein first thing in the morning. So I've been doing a lot more eggs, and so that means a lot more breakfast tacos, and uh, that's a good thing, you know? No one can eat too many tacos. Uh, if you know me, you might have noticed that there is something missing here this morning for me. That is a nice cup of coffee. I uh, did not make a cup of coffee because I'm gonna go out and get a cup. Uh, I've been hanging around here in Santa Rosa and Santa Rosa is a fairly big city about an hour drive north of San Francisco. There's been a bunch of coffee places that I've been trying out and people keep telling me to try out one particular coffee place and uh, it's just in a neighborhood that I just don't spend much time in. So it's taken me a little while to get around to it, but I think today's the day we'll go out and check it out. Uh, this is also probably a good day for me to talk about something that is on my mind a little bit. When discussing van life, there seems to be a lot of bad advice out there. And it's bad advice across the board, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, now, this is my personal opinion, I'm, I'm going to say. Uh, so th this is just how I see things. I can't give anybody else's opinion because I can only give my own. But I do think that there's one thing in particular that people try to push on new people that are new to van life, uh, which is to get out of the city, uh, just go to the desert, drive your van to the desert and park and just stay there. And that's something that I just don't agree with at all. And a day like today will 
kind of show why I think that way. So it's probably a good day that we talk about this. So a good place to start off here is parking at night. Uh, people tell you that you have to go to the desert, that you can't park overnight in a city, that uh, the desert is your only option or your best option. It's not something that I agree with at all. Now I'm parked on a fairly busy street at the moment, as you can tell. Uh, parked right next to a little plaza here. Uh, there's a Whole Foods right here in this plaza, as well as a bunch of other things. Uh, but this is just a city street that has open parking on it. And so uh, I parked here last night. It wasn't the quietest place to park. Uh, you know, maybe the desert would have been much quieter, but this is a good place to park. Uh, slept great here all night long. So there's uh, one thing that I disagree with about people saying that you can only live in a van if you live in the desert. Now, one advantage of being in the desert versus a city is that in the desert, you can park and not move for a number of days. Now, being here in a city, uh, there's generally a 72-hour rule. Uh, it's pretty standard in North America that you have about 72 hours uh, that you can park somewhere and then move. I personally like to move every day. So I'll park in a place at night and then I'll go someplace during the day. Uh, I might come right back to the place that I parked last night uh, and park there again, uh, might do that, but uh, I always leave during the day. One thing I found about being in a desert, especially uh, is if you're out in the sunshine all the time, uh, especially that dry air uh, and the wind blowing all the time. Uh, I've had a bunch of sand damage to my van in the past. Uh, in fact, my windshield is pitted pretty badly from being out in the desert. Uh, and tires, I've gone through a, a lot of tires, not because I've wore the tread off of them, but because the sidewalls have got uh, dry rot, uh, just sitting in the sun and in that dry air uh, has just totally aged the tires more than driving around. So that's one of the little things about being down the desert that might seem a bit deceptive there that you're thinking, oh, I can cut down on my mileage, but that dry air and all that sunshine and all that wind uh, is a factor too that you really need to think about. Now, we're gonna go get a cup of coffee at a place called Cuppa, and I think they're about two and a half or three miles away from where we are right now. A little more driving than I normally like to do here today, but um, since I didn't make a cup, I'm gonna have to uh, just go ahead and do the miles if I want a cup. Of course, I could just climb back in the back here, make a cup right now of coffee that I have on hand and not drive around. But you know what? Variety is the spice of life. And uh, that's a nice thing about being in a city is there are a bunch of coffee shops all around and uh, I'm just happening to pick one that's about two and a half or three miles away because, well, so many people keep telling me I've got to go there. So that's why we're going there today. Gas is expensive on this side of town. Okay, we made it over here. Uh, even though we only drove a few miles, uh, the one thing that I should probably just point out that I do understand about city life versus desert life is there's a lot more traffic in the city. I do get it. I understand. I'm not uh, not glossing that over at all. Uh, generally, I just don't drive much, so I don't have to deal with it. Uh, but anyway, here we are at Kappa. So like I said, I generally avoid this part of the city, but so many people, so, so many people have told me about Kappa here and have told me I need to try it out. That is the reason I have decided I'd better give it a try. So I didn't realize Kappa next door is cash only. So a uh, good thing is there's a store right next to Kappa and uh, pretty well stocked. This is a very nice store. Uh, I do need some half and half or whipping cream or something to go with my coffee because I'm almost out. So I'll uh, buy some here, get some cash, and then we'll go back over to Kappa and buy a Kappa coffee. Okay, this works. Whipping cream, which is my preference, and it's on sale. So see, this is meant to be. 
put the heavy cream in the fridge and now let's go get our coffee. What a beautiful sunny little spot here. I have to sit and enjoy these two cups of coffees because I'm doing what I normally do. I get a cup of drip coffee to try and then I also get a latte and then that, that gives me a good idea of uh, the scope of the coffees that they sell at a place. So I'll sit and enjoy these and then I'll give you my verdict in a few minutes. Okay, that's an easy verdict. That's about as good as it gets for me, for a coffee place. Coffee was fantastic. A uh, local owner uh, was really nice. I got to chat with her a little bit. So uh, definitely a fantastic place and exactly the kind of place that I look for. And I will definitely be back at some point. But now I want to walk a little bit and uh, I want to uh, maybe get out of such a uh, busy space and find a little bit of green if I can. So I would like to find a park, some place to walk around at. So there's one not too far away called Howarth Park, I believe. So let's go check that out. Turn left on the Pacific Avenue. And here we are, Howarth Park. Uh, apparently everybody else had the same idea to head out here to this park because it is packed. Uh, there's an upper parking lot up there that is totally full, but found a spot down here. Uh, so uh, let's check it out, see what it has to offer. Uh, must be a great park, being that everybody else is here too. definitely see why it's a popular park here. Uh, there's hiking trails all over, uh, there's a lake, and there's all kinds of things to uh, do and check out. Not really sure where the trails are, so I'm just walking around, hoping to uh, stumble into them, but uh, it sure is pretty out here. Um, I've been missing being near the water, so this is kind of cool to see this. Okay, this is what I was looking for, a little trail map. See if I can figure out where I am and where we're gonna walk around to. One of the things about being in a city, at least a city like Santa Rosa here, that has trees and some green space, is you can uh, pop away from the crowds and get to uh, escape a little bit of the hustle and bustle of the city. Uh, but being in a city also means that you get to have interactions with people uh, on a regular basis. And that's something that I missed when I did spend some time in the deserts. Uh, a couple of years back, I spent some time in Arizona, and while I found Arizona to be a fantastic place to be, and I enjoyed every minute of it, really, uh, I did miss having just conversations with people. Uh, it's one of the things that I, I find uh, is misunderstood about me. Uh, people think that I'm just a lonely old hobbit and that I don't get out and talk to people, that I don't spend time with people. That's absolutely false. And mostly it's because I spend time in a city. Uh, like this morning, when I went to that coffee shop, I not only got to talk to the owner of the coffee shop, who was fantastic, by the way, but I talked to a couple of the patrons there of the coffee shop as we were sitting, uh, enjoying our coffee. We struck up some conversations, and that's something that I missed when I was being in the desert. Uh, it's one of those things that I think if you are an introvert like I am, it is nice to be able to get away from people once in a while. Uh, but also if you're an introvert like I am, it is nice to be pushed into having a conversation with somebody even when you're not really expecting it. Uh, it's a nice thing to have just people around and to get to meet people and uh, talk to people on a daily basis. Uh, and even though this is a busy park, there's another chance to be able to talk to people, uh, have conversations that I wouldn't have 
if I were down in the desert with uh, nobody really around to talk to. Uh, it's not open today, but they have a little railroad that you can ride here. And also look at that, a little uh, merry-go-round. Lots of cool things here in this park. This is a beautiful park. Now I do understand that you can go to the desert and be social. Uh, in fact, a lot of people head to the desert, uh, quartzite in particular, because it is the place to go. We've all been told that you need to pack your van up, head to quartzite and stay in quartzite for the winter because that's where everybody is. And so if you want to be social, uh, it's a good place to go because everybody's there. Uh, but that brings up another point that I think kind of gets lost is that if you're going to Quartzsite during the winter time, you are in a big city. Uh, it's a big city of nomads that just go for the winter, uh, most of them. There are people that stay there year round, but uh, it's just an influx of people and it becomes a big city, but it doesn't have the services that we have, say, here in Santa Rosa. Uh, here, just in the little five or six miles that I drove today, we passed about a dozen different coffee shops, uh, about six or eight different grocery stores. Uh, there's all of this around uh, with an easy access. But if you go to Quartzsites or any other desert area, and I don't want to pick on Quartzsite, but uh, Quartzsite's the easy one to pick on because that's where everybody seems to go. Uh, but if you go there, uh, you are in a big city. I mean, let's face it, lots of people there. And what that means is uh, you have limited cell service because cell towers can't cope with all the people that are there, the influx of, of snowbirds that show up. Uh, and you have limited options for groceries and supplies and everything else. So in my opinion, uh, Quartzsite is just a big city, except we don't think about it as being a big city because it isn't. Uh, it's only a big city when the snowbirds get there for the winter time. Yeah, I think I went the wrong way. I am glad I went this way because I did find another parking area down there that I didn't realize. And there's spaces available, so I should have looked at the other parking spot. Anyway, I know that for next time. But let's go back in the other direction so we can walk by the water because, as I was saying before, I miss being by water. I'm uh, usually near the ocean these days, although I pause when I go to say that because I do spend quite a bit of time around Washington State, or uh, as I usually call it, Seattle State, or just Seattle because that upsets people. Uh, I'm just joking, you know, about that. But uh, Seattle's not near the ocean, although there is plenty of water around it. But uh, yeah, normally I'm trying to stay closer to the ocean and uh, I'm a little ways away from the ocean at the moment and I'm missing it. When I stop and think about this, I realize that I'm probably a lot closer to the ocean than I would be in Seattle. Seattle's a good two hour drive away from the ocean where I think we're only about 45 minutes away from the ocean. I'm kind of forgetting where I'm at. And this is one of the troubles of being a nomad and I'm constantly moving around. Uh, sometimes I just forget where I am. Uh, the last few days I keep waking up and wondering, where did I park last night? And sometimes I have to look outside to remember where I am and uh, where I'm gonna go uh, that day because I just forget where I am. Well, the lake is down there, but we're a little ways away from it. I think that's a uh, water, drinking water reservoir, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I thought this trail was gonna be a little closer to it, but we get just a faint glimpse of it through the trees. Actually, there's another trail down there, but I didn't see where that one started. Well, it looks like there's an easy way to get on that trail that was down below us, so we'll take it and head back in the other direction. I'm starting to get hungry uh, since I had that tiny little breakfast. I uh, am wanting a sandwich now, so I think we'll mosey back slowly. Uh, maybe this will get us back to the parking lot. Maybe it won't. Um, I wonder, though, if this is a mountain biking trail. We'll find out, though. Uh, people are pretty friendly around here, so I don't think I'll get run over.
Well, the weather has been absolutely beautiful today. Uh, seems to be what everybody's talking about uh, because tomorrow, I think it's supposed to rain, they're saying. Uh, but I, I don't really mind a little bit of rain now and then. Uh, it's been mostly sunny since I've been hanging around here. And that's another thing that I would probably talk about a little bit, the difference between being around here and being in the desert is in the desert, you know that you're probably going to have a few more sunny days uh, than you would up in Northern California. But it's been surprisingly sunny here. Uh, I've not had any trouble uh, as far as solar power at all. Now it is a little bit limited. Of course, I would have more solar if I were down a little farther south. And that is where the desert is a little bit better in one way because uh, I would be able to utilize a little more solar power um, run a few things uh, off electric uh, more than I do now. Um, so like right now I run a heater that is uh, propane and if I had more sun, I could buy some more solar panels and utilize some more electric type heat, probably, maybe, uh, but that's just not possible up here in the north. Um, partly because we've got a few more cloudy days and partly because we're a little farther north here and that does affect the angle that the sun is hitting my solar panels. But uh, as far as all of that goes, uh, this county here has been fantastic and I have not been really needing any more solar power than what I've been getting. It's just been great. This is the right trail to take. I'm glad we found it. Gets us a little closer to the water, which is exactly what I was hoping for. But we'll just continue on here because I'm uh, getting hungrier by the minute. I do want to point out one little advantage that I might have being up here uh, in a uh, pretty well populated area uh, is that if I do run out of power, solar power, I could get a campground someplace around. There's plenty of campgrounds around uh, to be able to plug in and charge. Uh, recently, I bought a charger so that I could charge uh, that way if I needed to. Um, and I just need to point that out because uh, I am biased and I'm trying to point out the good parts about being in a city or at least near a city versus being way out in the desert someplace away from services. Uh, there are plenty of options here in a city, and that's kind of the thing about a city is you got plenty of options, and options are good, I think. The more options we have, the better. That was a very short walk, but that's okay because I'm hungry, so uh, we can eat a little bit and then go back out again, maybe later. Uh, I, I have been doing shorter and shorter walks. I think in the past I would just walk for miles and get way away from the van and then I would be hungry or thirsty and be, you know, having to trek all the way back to the van. Nowadays, I don't get too far away from the van. I take little short walks, I get back, have something to drink. Oh, that reminds me, I need to drink something. Um, but yeah, that's the way I've been doing it lately. It just seems to be easier for me. And there's another kind of benefit to being in this type of environment, having some hills and some trees around. Uh, I get away from the van just a little ways and I can't see the van anymore. So it kind of feels like I've gotten away from the van a little bit farther than what I have. Uh, in the desert, you know, you walk forever, you turn around and you can still see your van down behind you because it's just one big flat open area. Not every desert, I know, I'm, I'm talking in general terms here. Uh, again, I'm biased, remember? I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> so I'm gonna do an egg salad sandwich for lunch here. Well, just a half an egg salad sandwich. I made some egg salad yesterday. Uh, I don't usually make egg, egg salad. I like it, uh, but it uses a lot of water, um, just cooling the eggs down and all. I don't ever have any ice uh, in my fridge. Uh, actually, that would be impossible at the moment. I have my fridge freezer combination turned into just a fridge and the freezer's turned off, so don't have a way to hold ice. Uh, but I don't ever use ice in drinks or anything, so uh, that's another reason why I don't 
normally make egg salad is that to cool the eggs down after you cook them to keep them uh, nice and yellow is kind of difficult without some ice or a lot of cool running water and that's just something that I don't uh, like to uh, waste. Um, I have the capability of holding about 16 or 17 gallons of water if I fill up all of my jugs uh, and being here in the city of course it's easy for me to get water I can get water anywhere uh, in fact I should have bought some water last night when I was at uh, the market but maybe I'll do that today or tomorrow it's something I always have to do I always have to get water this is another thing that has me thinking about being down in the desert as much as I enjoyed my time in Arizona and Arizona kind of is the one that stands out a little bit more to me when I think about being in the desert I uh, spent quite a bit of time there and it, when I would start to run out of water I would get really kind of panicky because sometimes it would be a big long drive for me to get into a town to get water. Uh, it was just kind of a big deal. Now water was a little cheaper there. There were machines everywhere that you could just walk up to and uh, a lot of times I would find water for 25 cents a gallon. Uh, pretty impossible to find water for that price here in Santa Rosa, uh, but water is available all over here. Uh, much more available here than it was in the deserts and uh, that's another reason why I like being in a city environment because when I start to run out of water I get kind of panicky and uh, if I've got a big long drive to go get some more water that's uh, just adding to the cost of it so even though that water was 25 cents a gallon in a lot of places when I was in in Arizona and around Quartzsite um, there I go picking on Quartzsite again I'm sorry I, I really am I don't mean to pick on Quartzsite uh, but even though the water was cheaper I was driving a lot more, uh, putting more wear and tear on my van, uh, buying more gas. So that added to the cost of the water, where here, uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm usually within walking distance of getting some more water. So that's another little difference there. And one that people that enjoy the desert and like being in the desert don't like to talk about. But uh, we'll, we'll mention it today because uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the thing that we need to think about. And uh, certainly one of the things that kind of bothered me about being in the desert. Uh, one of the reasons that I made egg salad yesterday is I found a new recipe, uh, new to me, uh, in a way of cooking the eggs uh, and to keep them cooked exactly the way that you want them to be cooked. Um, I don't like any green around the yolks and I was able to actually do that with this batch and I was really quite happy. Uh, this method has you start with boiling water and you drop the eggs into boiling water. And uh, at first I thought it didn't sound like it would work, but seems to work perfectly, uh, at least this time. I'll do it again and try it again and see if it's consistent. But as far as I can tell, it's the best way to uh, cook egg salad. So I've got this great egg salad here. Uh, I added a little bit of mayonnaise to this and then added some chopped up pickles and Kalamata olives. And then I don't have any mustard, so uh, to give me a little bit of spice, I've added just a touch of Serrano yellow bird and that'll finish it off here. The parking lot cleared out, so since there were available parking spaces, I moved over here just so I have like a little uh, front porch area. This is my front yard. I do this quite often. Uh, the only problem is a little more traffic noise over here on this side of the parking lot. For me to fully enjoy my day here, I'm gonna need some more coffee. So I've got the kettle on and I have a bag of coffee that I bought last night because I parked next to Whole Foods. I went in and just checked it out and they had coffee on sale. So uh, I bought a bag of Intelligentsia coffee. This is a coffee, I, I always say this, that I really like this coffee, but I only ever buy it when I find it on sale. So since it was on sale, I bought a bag. Um, this is really good stuff. And I only drink light roast coffee. Well, I should say I only enjoy drinking light roast coffee. 
So that's one of the reasons that I bought this is it was uh, one of the few light roast options that they had uh, that was on sale. They actually had a number of uh, light roast coffees in there, uh, but since I knew this one, I've had this one before, uh, it was a safe buy for me. Um, I was surprised that Whole Foods actually sells a few of their own brand uh, light roast coffees. Uh, I didn't know that. I don't shop at Whole Foods all that often, and the only reason I went in there was because it was convenient. I just, I had stopped there, parked there last night, and so I walked in and checked them out. Um, if you're not familiar with Intelligentsia Coffee, uh, this is a really ultra premium brand, and I really like this one. Uh, it is called Espresso, Black Cat Espresso, uh, but it is a very, very light roast coffee, if you can see that there. Uh, and so it's got lots and lots of flavor. So we'll brew this up and have a cup and enjoy the day just a little bit more. Did you get the subtext of that little story? Uh, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, because the thing is, sometimes I don't explain myself fully. Uh, sometimes I'm joking and people don't understand that I'm joking. And other times I just say things and kind of expect people to get the gist of what I'm saying. Um, case in point here, the other day I made a joke about a carton of cigarettes and quite a number of people think that I'm a smoker now. Uh, I've never smoked a day in my life. Uh, haven't smoked even one cigarette ever. Uh, that's not going to change. But for whatever reason, people didn't get that I was joking. So if you didn't get the kind of subtext of that last story, I found some really good coffee that I really enjoy that I just walked over and bought last night. I was able to do that because I'm in a city with a bunch of stores everywhere. Uh, there were several stores uh, in the neighborhood there that I could have walked to and I walked to Whole Foods because they had coffee on sale and so I have choices here. And again, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, uh, I like choices. Uh, the more choice, the better as far as I'm concerned. Now this might be a good time to point out that I do have a little bit of a bias toward the desert and I am very aware of it. I was born and raised in the desert of California, uh, very far south of where I am right now, and I've spent so much time there, uh, over 40 years uh, in the Southern California desert, that now that I am away from that area, I don't really want to go back. Uh, and yes, I'm aware of that bias, and yes, uh, I try not to let it influence me too much. I do realize that the desert is a great place to be. And if that's where you want to spend your time, then definitely spend some time in the desert. If you haven't ever been to the desert, any desert, you're probably gonna really like it for uh, all the things that it has to offer. Uh, but in my time away from it now, I can tell you that I definitely prefer the weather up in Northern California much better. Uh, it's cooler out uh, today, about 60 degrees or so, maybe even a little bit warmer today. Uh, just fantastic. And I, I do enjoy the cooler weather nowadays. Uh, I don't really want to go back to those triple digit weather days that uh, I had so many of. Uh, I worked outside a lot and uh, it was taxing, so um, I just want to point out that I do understand my bias, and it is always on my mind, but uh, my points about uh, people just encouraging everybody to go to the deserts and ignore everywhere else is, if you want to be in the desert, you should definitely go there, but if you don't want to be in the desert, you've got choices of places to be. And as far as services and weather and people that are nice to uh, have conversations with, uh, perfect strangers like today, I've had several already. Uh, I know I didn't record any of those because that's not something that I do. I don't record people that I talk to, uh, but plenty of nice people around here. And uh, those are all really good reasons to uh, stay up in Northern California and not just listen to everybody when they tell you just go to Quartzsite. 
just, I'm saying quartzite because I, I've had a long-standing uh, tradition of picking on them today. Uh, picking on them quite a lot recently, not just today. But yeah, go where you want to go. There's choices. You've got many, many choices. And I think that uh, I've proven over the years that you don't have to run away to the desert to be happy and to find a comfortable place to be. There's a lot of comfortable places around the world and uh, I think weather and the people that you surround yourself with are uh, more of a factor that you, that you should consider than anything else. Uh, never mind the traffic noise, it is a little loud, but the weather is beautiful. So we should walk a little bit more uh, before it gets dark. walking up the trail that goes right beside the little train track here. I wish the train was running so we could see it. I'm not sure if it's a seasonal thing or if it's a weekend thing, but it's not running today. I guess that means we gotta come back here at some point. Oh, for some odd reason, it's not nearly as busy out here in the park as it was earlier. I'm not complaining though. This is such a nice little park. This is the kind of place I look for whenever I'm staying in a city so that I can get some walking in. I can take advantage of the fact that they have restrooms here. Uh, of course, I do have a toilet, but if I use my toilet, then I gotta clean it out. So uh, just easier for me to use the public restrooms here. And they were actually pretty clean. So all in all, nice place to be. It's probably about time to take off here. The park closes at sunset and we're not too far away from that now. So uh, probably go find a place to park for the night. And uh, I like a city like Santa Rosa, uh, kind of a mid-sized city because there are just a ton of places to park at night. So just like where I parked last night, I just drove around and found a place that was uh, kind of a residential area, uh, even though it was next to a little mall there with uh, the grocery store. Uh, it's really just a residential area with uh, free legal street parking. Uh, just look for some signs and make sure that there are not any parking restrictions that I need to pay attention to, which there weren't any there last night. Now, there is just that, what I described right across the street from us here. So I could just pull over there and park right across the street. Uh, it would be fine, there's no parking restrictions. Uh, the only trouble is, as you can probably tell, it's pretty noisy here. It's been noisy all day long. I don't suspect that's gonna change at night. So just to find a quieter place to park so I don't have cars rushing by me all night, uh, we'll just take a look at the map and find a place maybe on a side street somewhere a few blocks around the area here and just go over there and park for the evening. Okay, so I just spent a couple of minutes looking at Google Maps. That's what I use to try to locate a possible parking spot. And I can zoom in, I can look at street view, and it gives me a really good idea of what a neighborhood might look like uh, just so that I don't have to drive around uh, constantly to try to find a parking spot. So that's how I start. Now if I'm, if I'm walking around the neighborhood, I will just keep my eyes open for any potential spots that I can park. Uh, like when I walked back in that direction, I checked some of the side streets to see if they would be suitable to park tonight. Uh, they look decent, but they looked again very busy and they were already filled up with vehicles. So it might have been a little bit tight for parking. And I generally try to avoid that too. If a place looks really tight for parking, I'm just gonna skip it and look for another spot. So uh, after looking over Google Maps now, uh, there looks like there could be a few different spots uh, just a few blocks away from here. So we'll head over uh, what I do is I try to find two or three spots that look good in one area. And if I find two or three that are close 
together, then that's the direction I'll head. Uh, if it looks like there's just one spot that looks okay, uh, I'll save that one for later because oftentimes when I get to a spot uh, and look at it uh, in real life instead of just on Google Maps, sometimes it looks different than what it does on the map. So I like to have a few options lined up. Just again, I don't want to be driving around more than I need to, but looks pretty good just uh, about four or five blocks away. So we'll head over there and see if we get lucky. Okay, so I drove around a little bit more than I would have liked, but I found a little side street uh, in a residential area here, and it should be much quieter than over by the park. Uh, should be a lot less traffic at night going by, so this is preferable to me versus uh, a real busy space. Uh, I can't always find a quiet spot like this, but if I have the option of parking in a quieter spot, obviously I'm going to take it. Uh, but the way that I park at night, um, maybe the term beggars can't be choosers uh, kind of comes to mind. Sometimes I have to just park in a really busy space, but uh, kind of nice to be able to have a space like this where I can park at night and have some nice quiet area around that I don't have uh, to uh, listen to all night long. I've got my parking spot, which means I should be good for the night. I shouldn't have to go anywhere else. So I will turn my attention to dinner. And the first step is to toast up some of the sourdough bread. Uh, this is that bread I used a little bit of for lunch today. Uh, I'm going to toast it up because sourdough should always be toasted. I didn't toast the bread for my egg salad sandwich because I find it's a little hard to eat egg salad if it's on toasted bread. Um, the bread obviously is going to taste better, but it makes it really difficult to eat because the egg salad is just so soft it kind of mushes out of the sandwich and just makes it really messy. So I opted not to toast it and then I spent the whole time eating that sandwich thinking I should have just toasted it because the bread tastes so much better. Uh, this bread's actually pretty good. Um, it's a local bread that I bought before, so it has nice flavor to it, but Again, I think sourdough should just always be toasted. Uh, it's just that little slight dilemma when you're working with uh, some ingredients like egg salad. Maybe tuna salad would be the same too. Uh, anything like that. Then you got the dilemma. What are you gonna do? But no such dilemma for us here because we are making a hamburger. So of course we are going to toast our bread. Okay, dinner is done. This is a rather simple burger, but uh, to change it up, because I do eat a lot of burgers, uh, I left off the cheese. I normally make a cheeseburger, but I left off the cheese this time, and I added some pickles and some steak sauce, and I also did a little bit of some sun-dried tomato pesto, and this is a really nice little flavor extra. Uh, if you can find some sun-dried tomato pesto, this is a really good thing on a burger or any sandwich, uh, really. And when I do sun-dried tomato pesto, I like to layer it up with just a little bit of mayonnaise. So that's what I did here. Um, I just think it just tastes better that way. So a uh, simple dinner, but um, this is uh, kind of right up my alley, obviously. Now, there is one other thing that I should probably talk about, but it's something that I don't like to talk about. Uh, and that is one of the big differences between being in a city and being way out in the middle of nowhere, like a desert, is uh, those of us that have health problems, uh, it can be kind of scary. Uh, if you're a ways out and you have a flare up with whatever health concern that you have uh, happens, uh, what do you do? And that's something that I don't really like to think about or talk about, but um, my, my health has not been good the last few years. And uh, it is always kind of on my mind. Uh, if I am way out uh, with limited cell service and uh, ways from any kind of uh, healthcare or uh, supplies of any kind, uh, then it is a little nerve wracking. And um, well, it's not something that I like to think about. I think anybody that is 
middle-aged or older like me uh, is something that we need to consider. And it's another reason why I like being more in the city than I do out in the middle of nowhere. And of course that applies to uh, out in national forests or anything else. Um, I like to have cell service and I like to be around somebody and something uh, just in case uh, there is a need for it. And we don't really need to talk about it too much, but I feel like it's something that I should bring up because uh, today's video really is all about the positives and negatives of being in a city. And uh, it is one of the bigger positives of being in a city is if you've got health problems like I do, uh, it is a little bit more comfortable to be in a city environment instead of being way out in the middle of nowhere. Now, I don't want to end this video on a down note. Uh, I want to encourage anybody that wants to try van life to try it, but think through your options. Uh, there are definitely some things that are great about being in the desert. I think I listed quite a few more good things about being in the desert than I intended to, uh, even though I do have my internal biases against the desert. Uh, it's not a bad place to be. Uh, as long as you're aware that you have choices of places that you could live out of a van, that's really what I want to get across here. And if you've got special circumstances, of course, uh, like I do and a lot of us do, then I think it's a good idea to really make sure that your options are well covered. Um, you don't want to get down into the desert and realize that it is not the place for you because you've got a long drive to get out of there. And uh, that's another reason why I just have not wanted to go to the desert, at least not this winter. Who knows about next winter? I may head to, to the desert next winter, but at least this winter, uh, I skipped it entirely and I did not miss it one bit. And uh, that's not a knock against the desert again. Uh, it's just that I found that for me in my situation, uh, I can't take the bad advice that keeps coming my way, that uh, people tell me that I need to get out of Northern California. I need to get away from the Pacific Northwest. I need to uh, go to the desert someplace drier and uh, warmer and sunnier. I haven't needed it uh, this winter, and uh, I've actually been much happier this winter than I have in the past, and I owe that all to just doing van life the way I need to do it for me and not listening to the bad advice. So uh, look over your options and make sure that you're doing what you need to do for you, and then that way you'll be happier, at least that's what I think anyway. And I think we're going to end it here. Um, not on a down note, I hope. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.